I'm Ann Domick. I live in Aurora with my husband, John. We've lived here for 25 years, raised our kids here. We have two children who have both flown the coop <laughs> since we started. Our son lives in Oregon with his wife, and our daughter is currently in London, England, getting her MBA. I worked as in television news here from, gosh, 1987 on, and John was an attorney here in Cleveland. I'm John, and uh, grew up in South Euclid, and then uh, went out to Northwestern and met Ann, and uh, that's where the story begins. John was always the calm one who knew everything. He just was like, had it all down, all the little bits and pieces. Always, you know, just on top of things, always just ready with an answer, until he wasn't. It, it, it wasn't anything that was like setting off big belts, until unbeknownst to the children and I, when he started failing at work. I mean, he just think about trying to keep everything in your brain as a corporate attorney, and you can't, and he just couldn't. And it was at that point that we realized something more was going on. There were more, nothing big, huge, you know, happening, just little things that just didn't add up. So we went to our GP, did a quick test, sent us to a geriatric neurologist. When we finally got a diagnosis um, of Alzheimer's disease. First of all, I, I can't even describe the utter shock. I was so scared. I, you just, when you can't, when they say, yeah, you're sick, but there's nothing we can do about it. Even though we knew and we had a course of action for Alzheimer's, I just kept thinking, why did it have to be this? Why did it have to be something that even the best people in the world are baffled by? It answered things. <laughs> Wondering why I had to start writing things down at work that I usually didn't, and not remembering as much as I used to. But now I was taking pages and pages of notes, and then having to go through those as opposed to relying on the memory. Recognition of some change, but I, assuming it was uh, old age, and, <laughs> you know? One of the um, neurologists at the clinic came to us and said, you are perfect for this trial we're running. You're early stage disease, so you have to, had to be bad, not too bad. Would you like to come and test? The drug is lecanemab. So every other week since, for three years now, we've been um, going down to the clinic and it's an infusion trial. So John gets an infusion. Since we started the trial, his clinicals have been like this. They have not gone down. We do not expect them to go up. That's a given, and we get that. But John has tested steady for over two years now. The drug is not meant to be a cure. It won't reverse anything, but it's given us probably these past year and a half, two years of no deterioration, which kind of unheard of before this. I first heard about the Alzheimer's Association. John's two sisters and I actually took a seminar that the Alzheimer's Association put on. Since then, hearing about community educators and the work they do, and I thought, I can do that. I can go out and talk to people. I like meeting people. The Alzheimer's Association, at least through their volunteer program, I felt like maybe I was being a little more proactive in my caregiving for John and others. It's not the isolating disease that we thought it was at first. There are all these people working and volunteering and doing things. It just wasn't on our radar before, but the Alzheimer's Association brought us to the fact that we are not alone. That helpline that the Alzheimer's Association has is a godsend. And you're talking with, you know, social workers <laughs> at the other end 24-7. You don't feel isolated. You feel like, oh yeah, there are people out there who, who know what's going on. It's just always there in the back of our mind that, that there is someone there that we can talk to. I, I love the, the helpline. The idea of that helpline is an amazing thing to me. We've seen people who are our age, who are just like John, who are still driving, who are still, you know, getting out and golfing and living a very normal life, except for the fact that there is a disease in his brain. Don't be fearful. Um, and there's hope out there. And there's continuing, uh, increasingly hope. 
Uh, there's a lot of people and a lot of uh, institutions working to try to uh, create um, remedies or, or drugs or things that can help you. And there's a lot of resources out there that uh, can help you as well uh, as you go through it uh, with you and your family.